when you're using Atom SQ in Studio One, you're basically getting three different instruments all at once. So um, basically you'll have your drum pad or drum controller, which is kind of what you see right here. But then you'll also have a, kind of a keyboard mode, and then you'll also have, of course, the step sequencer mode as well, which is tied into Studio One's pattern editor, and the step sequencer is only available in Studio One. It's not available uh, outside of that. So I'll cover um, those three instruments here. Not in great depth, because I'll do separate videos on that, but I just wanted to kind of show you um, just overall what each mode is kind of like. So what you're looking at right now is what you'll see whenever um, we're actually paired up with Impact XT. So when Impact is on a track, uh, Impact has 16 different pads, eight different banks, and you can have different colors set for each of these pads. And so that's what you're seeing here on Atom SQ. Uh, the benefit here is that you're not just seeing 16 different pads, you're actually seeing 32 at any given time. So you could easily go through and you know maybe map out your loops to the upper lane and then maybe one shots to the bottom lane so you can kind of play along. <laughs> And by the way, um, these pads are pretty sensitive, you know. Of course, they're velocity sensitive. Unless you shut off and you go to full velocity. Right? But I'll switch back here. So you can see just the slightest little tap. We'll get that going. Cool. So anyways, a little aside there. But they're sensitive pads. Um, you can assign them how you need to within Impact XT and then set up up to eight different banks uh, to go through and play. So that's kind of the drum part of it. Of course, you also have touch strip controls. So this is uh, by default set to mod wheel up here at the top, but it's actually assignable to things like pitch bend, um, a control link, which will allow you to control various parameters in Studio One uh, using the touch strip. And then the plus and minus buttons are pitch bend. So basically, they're both pressure sensitive, so as you give more pressure to the plus button, obviously pitch is gonna go up. If you give more pressure to the minus, then it'll go down. I can probably do it here, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, let's see. It's more pressure, and then back to middle. And then more pressure on the, the minus button there. So um, drum pad mode, you have your banks, like I said before, touch strip. Uh, all of the controls up here are usually mapped out to, um, if it's a native plugin, which means a plugin that comes with Studio One, they're already pre-mapped and ready to go, but you can change those at any time, which I'll cover in a different video. Um, and that's drum mode. So the, the next mode from here is going to be, of course, um, keyboard mode. So when I switch over to a track that's basically anything other than impact, uh, we're going to get a piano layout here. So the bottom lane is going to be just like the white keys on a piano. And the top lane is going to be like the black keys on the piano. I know it might be a little bit hard to see with my bright lights, but if I cover it up, you can see that there's a you know a gap there, a gap there, just as you would see on a regular piano. So um, this means you have kind of instant familiarity with uh, for those of you that play play piano essentially. And once again, the the keys are really nice. Not, not keys, but pads are really sensitive. So I can really bang them out um, or just play extremely soft and expressive. Now, when you're in this mode, um, you'll see that we have these uh, different color pads here. And that's basically the root, whatever the root is currently set to uh, within uh, SQ. And then if that's uh, one octave there, you, in, you know, the A through H buttons here have different functionality when you're in a keyboard mode. So um, where these were banks before, these are now octave buttons. So you'll see I'm in this octave, but, right? And then the A is a different color, so uh, A is actually sustain and it's press and hold. So if I press and hold that, So A is your momentary sustain, and then B through H are your octaves, essentially. Uh, same thing, pitch bend here, mod wheel over here, but of course completely um, assignable from, from SQ, which we'll cover in a different video. So um, piano mode is super flexible because also, let's say that you didn't want your lowest note to be C if you needed to play something right below it. You can actually um, come over here and switch the range. So if we hit range, this, uh, keep an eye on pad number one, that's blue, but I can actually move that up or down. So that gives me additional room on the bottom side here, or if I need to go the opposite direction, I could as well too. So it's kind of like, you know, you're looking down 
in a window of a big piano from left to right, and you're just kind of moving the piano under it, so you're seeing a different cross-section of that piano. And you also have octave controls, all that good stuff here as well, too. So um, this is your standard keyboard layout mode but you can change that as well too, and that can be dictated by whatever scale you currently have selected. Um, so you can select scale right here. Right now we're set to chromatic, which means that every single note is in play. But as I move this, this is major. So you'll see now only the bottom row is brightly lit. Although it's hard to see on camera, but um, actually the, the um, black keys are still there. They're just very, very dim. So this allows you to, of course, play the major scale, but you still, can play the you know quote unquote wrong notes if you wanted to or blue note as well too. So as I switch to a different scale, you see that updates, updates, updates. Uh, range still applies here as well too, so I can push this up or down. And then um, root also applies here too. So if I go back to major, and right now we're on C, so this is a C for those of you that are familiar with piano. But if I move to C sharp, now we have C sharp major, D. Etc. So that's how you can kind of change the layout of piano mode. Uh, there is one other layout that you'll probably use, um, which is up here if I select uh, layout and then turn this. So this goes into um, continuous mode. So instead of being a traditional, you know, piano mode, now everything is just laid out from left to right. We get to 16 and then 17 just continues on. And then here too, if we switch into a scale mode like major, you'll see that only the correct notes will light up. And I'm playing them left to right now versus across a piano keyboard. And then the last mode is um, actually scale only. So now all the wrong notes are gone. And we're only seeing the, the correct notes, which is cool, especially if you get into things like minor pentatonics, you can just basically button mash. and um, play something that sounds good. So uh, those are your scale modes, that's your piano layout, and that's roughly you know this, this kind of piano mode that we'll be working with. There's more that you can do with that, but we'll cover that in a different video. So we've covered um, drums, we've covered piano. Uh, one thing I forgot to say about drums is that we do have a note repeat in here as well too. So you'll see note repeat up here at the top. So when I engage that, uh, you'll see we have our rate, uh, gate and then whether or not pressure will affect velocity. So this means as I hit There's pressure as I give it more pressure or less pressure or I can shut that off And it'll be whatever velocity you actually strike it at um, and then you can change the rate From here uh, of course using a knob to change the rate isn't the most expressive way to do it So you can actually go through here and I'll give you a sneak peek you can uh, assign the touch strip to be the repeater. So this basically means you'll see there's eight different segments here. Uh, each segment is actually a different rate. So if I wanted to do quarter notes, so I can kind of do rolls. Uh, using that. So that's a quicker way to jump in between um, different uh, rates essentially from here. So uh, yeah, that was a quick note on note repeat. So then the last instrument, which is probably one of the most uh, impressive ones, is actually the step sequencer within Studio One. So this is gonna be highly dependent on what type of event or what type of region you currently have in Studio One. There's two types of regions. There's a, uh, well, there's technically more than two, but within a virtual instrument, there's basically two. So you have your instrument part right up here, which is kind of your traditional um, MIDI region, if you wanna call it that. So when I go into editor mode, you'll see down here that we have either our kind of drum stack mode or the piano roll that you're used to. Um, but we also have a pattern over here. So if pattern is selected and a pattern has been created, when I go into the editor, then this is where things change. So um, you'll see now that Atom SQ has actually changed its layout and we're still on impact here. So instead of seeing two different banks at the same time, <clears throat> excuse me, basically we're seeing one bank at a time up top so we can select A, B, C, D, etc. But the bottom is where we're going to be doing our programming, uh, 1 through 16. So let's say I did kick, and I wanted to program it on the downbeats. I can program it really quickly from here. So you'll see, switch to a different camera there. You'll see that um, I've got those, those beats actually dialed in already. So then I can come over, let's say play, 
And once we get to that part in the loop section, all right, just a little basic four on the floor type of thing. But then I can go through and um, assign my uh, hi-hat as well too. So I can go through here, assign all those hi-hats. And then when I go to that um, same section, now you'll notice that it's all the same velocity right now when I program them in, but I can actually add accents here. So when I'm in editor mode, the plus and minus buttons are no longer pitched. They're actually modifiers uh, for the bottom row. So if I hold down the plus button and then just tap a few pads here or there, you'll notice that they're turning white here in SQ. And also here in Studio One, you see these little white notches. So that means that we're adding accents to those. So if we go back, so you can now hear that those, uh, the hi-hat's a little bit varied from time to time wherever those accents lie. Um, also, if I wanted to go through and, let's try. Okay, now if I wanted to program this, it's a longer loop as I press and hold it. But if I were just to go through and you know program four here, you'll just hear this, right? Just these short hits. Uh, we need to be able to basically tie across uh, multiple things. So once again, we use our modifiers here. So this is gonna be the minus button this time. So I hold down minus, hit one, hit the last pad, and now we've got a full bar tie. So that's how you'd go through and, and do ties here. So um, there's more that you can do as far as with automation, et cetera, but I just wanted to give you a, just kind of a basic rundown of uh, the pattern editor, specifically in drum mode. Now, when we're in um, a keyboard mode and we push editor, uh, this actually calls up the, um, the melodic editor. And so one thing that I didn't show in the drum editor is the ability to go through and change steps and resolution from here. So um, this means that I can select steps and then maybe extend this out to be 32 steps um, and maybe change the resolution, 32nd note or fourth note, or excuse me, quarter note, etc. cetera. Uh, I can add swing from here as well too. I can also um, duplicate variations, create different variations, etc. cetera. Uh, when we're in keyboard mode, if you remember, I was using the uh, scales earlier. So let's say I did a I don't know, minor pentatonic. Let's choose minor pentatonic. I'll just keep it in, well, I'll actually go to D. So I'm in D. So whatever scale and root that we have, uh, when we come into the um, editor here, you'll see that it actually keeps that same exact uh, scale and mode as well too. So let's say I wanted to do scale only, so I see everything going to editor. Now I have that exact scale and uh, the correct transposition or the right root here as well too. So I can go through here and um, program, or I can go into step record mode and pluck things away as well that way. So a couple different ways that you can work. But that's basically just a just general overview of these, um, you know, kind of three different modes of uh, of Atom SQ, right? So of course we have uh, the drum mode, which is two different banks simultaneously. And then we also have the, the pattern mode, basically, for, um, for that particular uh, event or that, that, that drum pattern, basically. And then, of course, we have our piano mode. And then we have the melodic editor here when we're working with the pattern as well, too.